So my name is Ben Gossick. I'm with the Solar Analysis Research Project. We uh, recently analyzed LIDAR data for the state of Minnesota and uh, measured solar potential across the state. Minnesota recently flew LIDAR flights uh, based on wanting to have a better hydrologic elevation data set. With the LIDAR data, we were able to pull all elevation values and conduct an analysis that let us look at shading and the solar energy that would fall on any surface across the state. Using this data, we have now uh, the ability to look at where our solar potential is, how it's distributed throughout the state, and communities. Uh, with this tool, communities can help adopt better policy that'll promote solar installations and stop relying so heavily on fossil fuels for their energy consumptions. So we started with the statewide LiDAR collect. From that, we were able to derive what's called a digital surface model, which is different from a digital elevation model, which returns the elevation of the bare earth. A digital surface model includes the highest points, which is called, also called the first returns. So you get the crown of trees, the rooftops, things along those lines. Once we were able to create a statewide DSM, we passed it into ArcGIS and ran some ArcGIS tools in order to create our solar installation. To develop the data, we relied on LAST tools to process the LiDAR file formats. LAST tools allowed us to work with the data in the compressed LAS format and saved us a lot of valuable resources for computer storage space. Um, with LAST tools and Postgres, we were able to automate the process for drawing in LAST tools dynamically based on their spatial indexes. After we had developed the surface model, we started using ArcGIS as the primary data processing tool. Similarly, we relied on Postgres to manage the fishnet tiles and iteratively process the data and clip it so that we would remove any edge artifacts and compile a statewide analysis. When we designed our app, it's just through a web browser, so it's not necessarily something that you'll go to the app store and download, but it is accessible on tablets and phones just as a web browser. Um, what we did is allow people to search for their own address, so they can type in their address and zoom to their house and look at their house. It's a pretty detailed data set. It just takes a second to load. Um, so you can click around on the map and it'll return a value um, with the total kilowatt hours um, per year and then the average per day. So people can use these values to determine whether or not they should contact a solar installer for a further analysis of their house. Um, we decided to not just limit the data to rooftops, but to provide it across the whole state. So that way, if someone was interested in setting up solar panels in their field, they have the opportunity to look at their field as well as their rooftop. We're very excited to be able to share our research methods and our data with the public. We're looking forward to seeing how people are able to use the data. We have gotten requests from natural resource managers to look at stream temperature and the effects of shading on stream temperatures. And we have used the data, seen the data used by departments of transportation to do precise salt applications and minimize the amount of road salts that are going to our surface waters. These are all ways that we never expected the data to be used. We uh, look forward to hearing other ways that people will be able to utilize the data and we're happy to share our processing methods and help make your community more resilient to climate change. Um, so please reach out to us and we'll uh, help you with your requests. One way that we know the data is going to be used is for encouraging uh, photovoltaic solar installations on top of rooftops or in fields. And what's great about that is local variables can be combined with our data. Our data, of course, just measures the amount of sunlight, but if you had new variables such as the cost of the solar installation itself um, or the return on your investment, that's really when it hits home for homeowners and business owners that uh, it's a good investment for their, their own uh, use. As we've seen from the, uh, the different uses of this data that we hadn't even anticipated, this data can be taken as far as, as your mind can take it. There's so many different applications that we never thought of. I've actually personally had people use it to figure out where they wanted to plant their garden next season, see if they could get a better exposure for the sun. Also, we couldn't have done this without the support that we received from the Clean Energy Resource Team, the University of Minnesota, U Spatial, and many other contributors. 
Good job.